This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and as promised, here is our SmackDown. This is the new Lenovo ThinkPad X1 Yoga 2.8 inch, 360 degree hinge with a pen and a touchscreen. And here is the Microsoft Surface Book, the incumbent with the uh, iconic, certainly, and unique kind of uh, fulcrum hinge design here. Magnesium casing, very high resolution display, also has a digital pen, both high-end machines, both quite portable, both in similar size. Now look at them now. Okay, so here we have two laptops, Ultrabooks, two unconvertibles, whatever it is you want to call them, that I think most people would absolutely love to have. This is the Microsoft Surface Book, came out in October 2015. Ooh readily available by December. It was really hard hard to get. And this is the Lenovo ThinkPad X1 Yoga. This just came out in January 2016. Both of these are pricey pieces. Let's get price covered first here. Uh, Surface Book is famously expensive. A lot of people say, well, that's the one I'd like to get if I won the lottery, okay? So it is not cheap. Starts at $14.99. You get a Core i5, 8 gigs of RAM, 128 gig SSD, and you get the 3000 by 2000 pixel sense IPS display with the pen and touch, no matter which model you get. ThinkPad starts at 1440 or so, and for that you get a Core i5 as well, 8 gigs of RAM, but a 256 gig SSD, but only a 1080p, 1920 by 1080 display. It supports the pen and touch as well. You don't have to hunt for the right model to get the pen with this one. They all do on the ThinkPad currently. So they're roughly, roughly comparable. Now the model that we have here is $18.99 for the Surface Book. That one has the Core i5, which is fine. Between Core i5 and Core i7, don't obsess too much, folks. With the 15 watt ULV CPUs, the performance is very close on those. Anyway, Core i5, 8 gigs of RAM, 256 gig SSD, and that special sauce, it has the NVIDIA dedicated GPU inside, the one that's roughly equivalent to the 940M, but with faster video memory. Anyway, a little graphics punch in there, that's kind of a neat feature. This ThinkPad we have here is about $1,800. This one has a Core i7, so you get the Core i7 for that. 8 gigs of RAM, 256 gig SSD, but still a 1920 by 1080 display. As you configure either of these upward, they get even more expensive. Recommendation, use one of your credit cards that has a cash back reward for these. Definitely, right? Okay, so there for those who can afford it and wish to spend that much money. In terms of looks, I know some people get the ThinkPad look and love it, some people don't. I think even non-ThinkPad people kind of like this because it's such a stealthy wedge of metal and carbon. It just looks pretty darn cool, even if you don't like the understated ThinkPad look. That said, when I posted some pictures of this up on Twitter, some people did say, oh my god, what an ugly laptop. So perhaps the aesthetic isn't for everybody. It's durable. It has a spill-resistant keyboard. It's the usual ThinkPad kind of thing going on there. So it's very easy to carry around. 2.8 pounds. It's slim. It's sturdy. With ThinkPads, you usually don't worry about them breaking easily if you travel around. So pros right there. And a mix of metal, carbon fiber, all that good stuff. Drop it on the table. Who cares? Surface Book. Vapor magnesium casing, the fulcrum hinge here. Now, people either love it or they don't like it, so I'd leave that up to you. Some people are just worried about what might get in the crack here. No jokes. Okay, no jokes there. But anyway, I haven't had problems with anything getting in there. This is 3.34 pounds to 3.5 pounds, depending on whether you have the integrated or the dedicated graphics option. So this one is a bit heavier as a complete package deal to carry around. It's pretty darn sturdy. The magnesium casing on this, I, I have not had any problems with it. I haven't dented it, damaged it. It doesn't really seem to scratch. Neither of these two show fingerprints, by the way. So I would say probably more consumers would say ooh and ah over the look of a Surface Book. But, you know, I leave that up to you. Both of them are durable. I feel somehow this is more awkward to carry. Some people like the feeling of it being like a book. You can carry it like this. But I feel... I just tend to handle this with more care, whereas with a ThinkPad, not so much. I don't worry so much about it. Don't ask me why. Just the way it is, but I think some people just feel that way. They want to baby this guy more, even though there really isn't a reason to do so. Next important thing is this one has a detachable 
tablet section, Microsoft calls it. The clipboard, you've all seen it. You press the little button, you wait a minute until it says it's ready to detach, and then your display section becomes a standalone tablet, because all the brains, except for the optional dedicated graphics and the secondary battery are up top here. So 1.6 pound tablet. For those of you who are going to be using this like a legal pad on your lap, or you're going to be doing artwork, that's more desirable, certainly, because it's lighter, it's quite thin, it's easy to handle. With the ThinkPad, 2.8 pounds makes it a pretty darn light convertible with a 360 degree hinge, but you're still going to be holding 2.8 pounds. Now, keyboard retracts over here, so you don't have to worry about the keys wiggling, but you, you see what I mean when you're holding it like that, you know, that's more. So, depends on your use case. For those of you who just occasionally need to sign forms, you know, ThinkPad are for business users. So for those of you who are just using the pen occasionally, it's not so much for a standalone tablet, for, for note-taking and for art, then this is absolutely fine. And for those of you with strong arms, well, it can be fine as well. Now opening them up inside, keyboard and trackpad. Both of these have really nice trackpads and keyboards. So again, it's not an easy decision. There's no clear winner here. A Surface Book has a superb keyboard. It's just a pleasure to type on. The only thing that bothers me a little bit is the, the trackpad slightly offset relative to the space bar. Not the end of the world there. Almost as good to as good as a, a MacBook Pro trackpad. Depends on your opinion of that. It's, it's good stuff. Now this has a very good trackpad too, a more slick surface too, so for those of you who like that really kind of more slippery kind of surface, it's good stuff. Synaptics trackpad, and there's actually a control panel on here so you can control a variety of settings. Plus you got that eraser stick pointer, the, the nav point for those of you who like that with the discrete buttons for the pointer itself. Back the keyboard on both of these. Now the Lenovo you would think would be the better keyboard because it has those ergonomic, kind of concave on the top, smile shaped keys, nice key damping, which they both have, but in practice I find that I type equally well with either of these. So there's no clear winner here. For biometrics, you have biometric authentication, otherwise known as Windows Hello these days. Fingerprint scanner on the ThinkPad, it's right there. It's the lay your finger on it, pretty easy to do kind of thing. It's very accurate. And for the Surface Book, we have Windows Hello. It uses the infrared camera up here to just look at your beautiful face and say, hey, that's you, and log you in to the computer. So you've got that option for both just handled in different ways. Higher quality cameras on the Surface Book because it is a tablet, and they figure that you might actually be picking up, waving it along, and doing stuff with it. And for those of you who haven't seen the Detach, there it is as a tablet. So you can see how easy this is. For those of you who really need pure tablet functionality, clearly this would be the stronger pick if you're going to be doing this sort of thing a lot. In terms of screen quality, well, let's put this back up here so you can see. This is a stunning display, about 410 nits of brightness, 3000 by 2000 IPS pixel sense display, bonded glass, so it reduces reflections. Now the Lenovo has an anti-glare coating, and I find them about equally as effective, actually. The Lenovo adds a little bit of a, a milkiness with the, the, the coating that's on top of the display, but it's not terrible. Lenovo has around 319 nits of brightness. They claim 300, but actually exceeded that. It's available in 1080p, 1920 by 1080 IPS, QHD, 2560 by 1440 also is an option, both with the same color gamut, which is not as high as Surface Books. For graphics professional, video production, that would matter. Not that this is that many points behind. It's only about four to six points behind there in terms of scoring for gamut. Still, if you asked me, I would pick this display. But display isn't everything, is it? There are other features we'll get into, too. And Lenovo fights back because they'll have an OLED model in April made by Samsung. Still QHD resolution. It'll have super rich blacks and it'll have very high color vibrancy, likely very high color gamut as well. So that's an interesting, very consumer kind of facing move for Lenovo to make there because usually the flashy, pretty screens are something consumers want more. It could be useful, certainly, if you want to give presentations that wow, though, it would be very effective. I'm not totally sold on OLED and laptops. We'll have to see the way it goes. OLED tend to have problems with screen burn-in and things that are very persistent, like your bottom bar over here, wisely in black. That's going to help a lot. And, and reduced battery life. Two hours less, Lenovo claims, with the OLED. But still, it's there, and it will be the flashy answer to the lovely display on the Surface Book.
How about pen technology? Both of these use electrostatic pens. This is an Entrig pen on the Surface Book. Most of you know that by now with the little eraser on the end, which is kind of a nice touch, a rubber eraser. And the ThinkPad uses Wacom's new AES, which is also electrostatic pen, and they perform really close. I give, for those who are doing art, I give a slight advantage actually to Surface Book. You get a more inky kind of line out of it. If you're doing something like brush painting, you'll notice that the, the variation of pressure, even though 1024 versus 2048 on the ThinkPad, this in theory has lower pressure sensitivity. It does a more natural job with strokes. And just to show you what I mean, this is Clip Studio Paint, and I have the inking tool selected. So you can see, I mean, that's just a very nice looking kind of calligraphy style line right there. That's a lot of kind of natural brush like stuff going on there on the surface, but then we're going to switch to the Clip Studio Paint running on the Lenovo. So here we go, same tool selected, same size. Difference in resolution may make things look a little bit different here, but that kind of looks more like a computer generated line. It doesn't have the kind of natural inky squiggly thing going on there, no matter how much I try. Whereas on the Surface Pro, I kind of got what looked much more like, you can see a natural illustration line there. So for art folks, that makes a difference. For note taking, these are both superb and they both have palm rejections. You can rest your hand on the screen when you write. So it's really for art where I'm talking about the difference here. And both of them are pretty quick. There's not a whole lot of latency when you're inking. All right, let's talk pens themselves for a minute. Again, both of these are using basically the same underlying technology, but they're not, you can't switch them back and forth. Sorry, that if you need an Entrig pen if we're for something with an Entrig digitizer, you need a Wacom AES pen for something with a Wacom AES digitizer. Both of these come with a pen. The Surface is a nice big pen with an eraser on it and a kind of hidden button on the side. It clips magnetically on. You might lose it. For those of you who don't like that, this ThinkPad pen actually lives in a silo. And to get around the, fa the fact that these require a battery in the pen, the pen is actually the active part rather than the display digitizer. This one has a little recharge capability. So that's pretty neat, but the drawback is it's one teeny skinny little toothpick that's gonna give you a hand cramp. Aha, uh -huh, but Lenovo does sell an optional pen that is bigger, does take the quadruple A battery just like this pen does, but is similar in size to this. No eraser on the end though. Horsepower and performance. ThinkPads tend to be pretty clean other than the required Lenovo software and drivers, stuff like that. No junk on there. Microsoft's just about as pure as you can get there. You get Windows, you get the drivers you need. There's a little Surface app and that is about it. So both very clean, both very fast, both running on Intel Skylake 6th generation Intel dual core 15 watt CPUs, core i7, core i5 options are available for both of these. They're really very comparable in other words. Intel HD 520 integrated graphics available on both of these. And this is where Surface Book pulls ahead with its special sauce. It's got the optional dedicated GPU, like I mentioned, in the base. So if you want some extra oomph for doing video processing in Premiere, if you're, you're impatient with your Photoshop filters and you feel like they can get a little love from CUDA and NVIDIA, graphics card, it's here for you. It makes gaming more enjoyable. Ultrabooks with just Intel HD graphics still just aren't all that. Not with Intel HD 520 graphics. I really wouldn't want to do it if I had a choice because you're looking at very low resolutions and low frame rates unless you're playing older games. With the NVIDIA GPU on this, it's no gaming laptop, but you can actually play things like Bioshock and Skyrim at pretty high resolutions like 1920 by 1080 and in medium settings. You can even get away with a little bit of Fallout 4 and all that sort of thing. Much more enjoyable. So for those of you who do plan on to doing some gaming or uh, GPU intensive things like video editing and lots of Photoshop work, then the Surface Book with the DGPU would pull ahead in performance there. Otherwise, they're pretty much the same. Available with 8 or 16 gigs of RAM. Uh, Lenovo doesn't have the 16 gig option available yet. That should be coming in February. They both are available with a variety of SSD drives. Now, Microsoft uses only PCIe NVMe SSDs. Those are faster drives that we're not seeing super performance so far. This seems to have more to do with Windows drivers. This is across the board. A lot of laptops with the fastest technology drives just aren't performing quite where we expect it. But anyway, potentially faster. The Lenovo is available with your choice of a SATA or a PCIe SSD, both also in M2 form factor in here. So. If you want to save some money, you get the SAT. If you want to spend a couple hundred bucks more, you get the PCIe with the Lenovo. There you have it. 
ram the solder on board with both of these. And well, with the service book, this thing is pretty much a sealed unit. So you're not going to upgrade anything in here. Anyway, you got to pull the display out of the poor thing just to get to anything. The Lenovo, you can open up the bottom end. Voila. Several Phillips head screws. You have access to the battery, the M2 SSD slot, and the wireless card in there. So a bit more serviceable, certainly, for the Lenovo versus the sealed unit that is the Surface Book. In terms of ports, Lenovo is going to pull ahead because, well, it is a traditional laptop. Some of you are moaning about the fact it doesn't have USB-C. Neither of these do. I really am not bothered by that now. In two years, I'm sure it'll be important. But right now, it's just more of a headache to search out USB-C dongle adapters. There's not a lot that's unique to USB-C yet where you're just not doing something other than finding an adapter to turn it into mini display port or HDMI or Ethernet or something like that. Anyway, Lenovo went with a bunch of standard issue ports now so business users could hit the ground running. As I say, you got your docking connector right there, mini display port, USB 3.0. Another USB 3.0, you got another USB port, full-size HDMI as well. So pretty good selection of ports. And a micro SD card slot that's hidden in the spine of the device. Optional 4G LTE. That's not an option with the Surface Book, so you have to use a, either a MiFi hotspot, your phone's mobile hotspot, or a USB LTE dongle with it. For this guy here, fewer ports. We have our... Mini display port, which can be converted to HDMI with a dongle. And on this side, we have two USB 3.0 ports and a full-size SD card slot. How about battery life? This one's going to be a moving target, particularly on Service Book, because there's more variety of the configurations, particularly if you have the dedicated graphics there. And once you do, you start using it, don't you? So it depends on the task that you have at hand. Now, Lenovo claims 11 hours runtime for their ThinkPad. Microsoft claims 12. Both of these are optimistic. Not a surprise there. On average, we've been doing about nine hours with Surface Book. You'll get longer battery life if you get the one that doesn't have the, the dedicated GPU, even though the, the GPU switches off and can use just Intel HD graphics to save some power. But on average, about nine hours for us. You may have different results. It depends on what you're doing and all sorts of things like that. The ThinkPad about nine hours also. And this is the 1080p model. We can't say about the QHD model because we're still waiting for that to come in for review. OLED, again, will have two hours shorter battery life according to Lenovo, but that's not out till April. So both of these are pretty good long-running laptops. If you're just doing productivity, streaming video, those sort of things. If you're getting into Photoshop, Premiere, uh, compiling software, your run times will be shorter on both of these. And again, a similar performance in terms of CPU intensive tasks there for battery life, but if you're hitting the dedicated graphics, you'll notice the difference in battery life here. It will drop, but then you're getting the benefit of the dedicated graphics. Neither of these gets hot or loud in my experience. Now with Surface Book, it's it's clever that because the top side is where all the brains are except for the dedicated graphics, you're not going to feel the heat on your lap, obviously, because this is the display section that's doing all the work. But that said, this doesn't get hot. Microsoft did some pretty fancy hybrid cooling here. We have our little ventilation all along the edges over here. Don't hear the fan very much either. And I do use this to do things like edit large raw files in Photoshop and good stuff like that. It, pretty quiet, pretty cool. The bottom, even if the DP, GPU is being used, gets warm, not hot. The ThinkPad does not get hot either. It will get warm right in this section right over here. And you'll hear the fan a bit more often in my experience, but not too often with this. It, it's fairly quiet machine, but a little bit more ventilation sound going on. This, of course, will have the heat on the bottom because it's traditionally designed in that respect. The components are in the bottom section. You have some ventilation here, which you should avoid blocking. You don't want to choke the poor thing. Not a huge, huge difference between the two of these, honestly. In terms of speakers, front-facing speakers on the Surface Book surrounding the display, you can't even see them. It's pretty neat the way they conceal them in there. The Lenovo has its speakers down here on the bottom. Now, Lenovo consumer laptops, the non-ThinkPad line, they sometimes have really good JBL audio, pretty loud and powerful. This is... The volume is adequate. It's not bad. It sounds pretty thin and pretty tinny, though. This is no multimedia. I'm going to have a great day with Netflix without plugging in some external speakers to really enjoy sound. Surface Book, quite loud. Nice and full sounding, so. So there you have it. Two 
awesome convertibles, and they should be for the price, right? These are also two of the most expensive you can buy in the sort of ultrabook convertible kind of category. We're not talking about gaming laptops and other things that get very expensive, different kind of product there. Anyway, either way, you're getting something that's pretty darn fantastic. I would love to have either of these. It's not an easy choice, but obviously I would say that Surface Book still is probably more appealing to the graphics arts professionals, the higher resolution, better quality display, the detachable tablet, much easier to write and draw. If you're somebody who is going to just take an awful lot of notes, you can't beat 1.6 pounds. It's just much more portable. But with the ThinkPad here, for those of you who are going to use it in laptop mode a lot and you're going to travel, I mean, this is one rugged but skinny machine here. And of course, it does have a pen and you can take notes on it. Like I said, you just have to live with the 2.8 pounds of it, which may be light among convertibles, but it's still noticeable in tablet mode. ThinkPad wins on ports. And there will be an OLED display option. It still won't be as high resolution as Surface Books, but it's going to be awful darn pretty looking. Uh, for professional use, though, again, for graphics professionals and stuff like that, it may not be the best display to choose because it's going to look, well, too saturated, sort of like the Samsung Galaxy phones do. Anyway, like I said, both are strong machines. Both have good processing power. If you need that dedicated graphics, there you got that in that Surface Book, too. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Don't forget to watch our full reviews of each of these products on our YouTube channel. Read our written reviews on mobiletechreview.com and subscribe to our YouTube channel to get more awesome Smackdowns, laptop reviews, smartphone reviews, and other cool gadgets too.